20 or sorry oh. i hit the record button guys because good people okay right sorry hit the hit the make sure button, I... everybody sorry about that i think it was like 20 22 percent of our business was outside mount caps um <laughs> we started making those in-house stopped uh you know paying somebody else and so i, I would say that coupled with the sales process and the consistent um, guiding, pressing, coaching, and constantly talking and staying on these guys about sales. I just left my sales meeting with my guys. Um, and so, you know, today we were getting after insurance. Both of them have insurance claims. We're talking about public adjusters. We're talking about Chandler, uh, the Chandler guy. Um, just trying to glean any wisdom that we can and press these guys to uh, not be laxical and just let life go by as a sales process. They have to be constantly doing all the little things at every job to make sure stuff happens. And so I was very like, hey, just go do your sales thing and I hope you sell something. Uh, and I was very single flu cap guy. Um, and when I made that shift, we went from, you know, 900,000 to 1.5 million and headed to 2 million. So anyways, that I would say that would, that would be my situation. Yeah. I mean, he's just mimicking exactly what we're doing. And, and, and that's where, that's where the difference is when you own a company. What did we all do? I was so guilty of this. I trained you for three months, one month, three days. It doesn't matter. And then I let you go. Go away, butterfly. And what did I do then? I just yelled at you, where's the sales and why didn't you get the picture? And that that is what you have to stop in your mind and what you do. You have to manage the sales. So, yes. Okay, Nick, you're up. Thank you, Logan. You bet. So tell me uh, how long you've been with us, who you are, and what's your biggest takeaway from working with me? Yeah. Um, so uh, we've been working together for say two, two years, two and a half years. Yep. That's right. Uh, and uh, when you picked me up, it was uh, I was running a small circus. So <laughs> the, the biggest takeaway is um, having access to a couple of decades of perspective, because there's a lot of times where so whether it be from managing uh, the employees, managing, paying attention to numbers. Uh, I can be easily, I don't actually know what's important to pay attention to in the moment, other than the stress of something that's happening. Whereas talking to somebody that's been around for decades, they're like, no, you need to focus on these things. And, and or especially even if something kind of becomes uh, uh, popular in the industry and I'm thinking, oh, I need to switch to this. There's been times where you've told me like, hey, I've seen this before Not for a minute. These guys have larger companies, but they're only a couple years old. They don't under watch what happens in a couple months. Uh, and so really a couple decades of perspective on how to handle everything across the board has been pretty invaluable because I mean, I had done a couple hundred thousand um, we first picked up and now we regularly do like 1.2 to 1.4 um, is where we are now. So we're also uh, looking, at uh close to two million square in the face for for this year awesome hey johnny where'd you go okay we'll we'll pass on him uh let's go i'm just going right, right across my screen so andy uh, yeah um andy got western uh north carolina wnc chimney solutions were in uh west of Asheville, north carolina um called waynesville we uh, currently only run in four trucks, two service sales trucks and two production trucks. Um, very overstaffed. I've got, uh, but that's intentional. We got out of those, those four trucks, we have a total of another six apprentices. Um, and those are, should convert to us being able to have at least three and four three service trucks and sales trucks in the fall and four production trucks in the fall maybe five um we're we did just over did like 2.2 million last year um 
been been doubling our revenue every year, more than doubling it the last three, four years, I guess. Uh, working with Chad this time around, only on month three. Uh, but I worked with you back in 22, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, for maybe close to a year. Yep. Um, and there was a lot of the things you were giving me then I wasn't listening to. <laughs> and uh, the thing that's probably has stuck the most with me right now is um, I think it's not so much the whole report, the nut report, but the knowing what it costs me to do business and breaking it down on a weekly basis and then looking at just my production numbers so I can see that we're break, at least breaking even every week um, so we can adjust schedules when needed or you know what what do we need to do to make that and that's not counting sales um, I used to try to count that as income but you know in reality that's not income yet <laughs> nope so <laughs> Um, doing a lot better on tracking those things. So that's the one, if I was to point my finger on one thing, I think that one little thing is going to, is helping me a lot, but as Nick said, or I think Nick or Logan just bouncing off ideas off you. And it's like, yeah, I don't think you need to focus on that yet. You know, let's do this first. So. Thank you, Andy. And, and, and really when yeah. when you run a business guys, I mean, it's all about the, the last number. Did you make any money? And 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 like you've heard me say before, and it was in my speech uh, when I, I talked at the conference, uh, was, you know, everything doesn't matter if you're not making money. <laughs> and so, I mean, sales fixes everything, but production, production really fixes everything. You got to have the sales first. But if you're not getting the production done every week and you don't know where your bills are, how are you going to make money? Well, I mean, it's so funny I mean, almost every one of you, when I first met you, and and uh, and certainly, oh, there's more people coming in here. Here, hold on. Certainly, most people that I start working with, they 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 just wait till the bookkeeper tells them, and it's like that's such a bad way to run a business. So, I mean, you definitely want to know, uh, you know, where are we at today? Are we making money th this week? Is and if if you're not, how do you fix it? Okay, so thanks, Andy. Um. Katie, where did you go? She went on. Uh, she went on mute. I think. Um, Mike. Oh no, here she comes. One minute. We'll we'll, we'll come to you back. I'm debriefing back. a call. Yeah, I'll be with you. We'll come back. Okay, Mike Shamans. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Shamans, uh, Quality Fireplace, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Um, started working with Chad last month, so uh, so not a whole lot of progress yet. But uh, but yeah, like you said, the the numbers thing is has been something that really been digging into um we and then the top the uh, top mounted caps like uh like someone was just saying um we actually had so here's a good little story we we had our, i think our first top mount cap sale um like last couple of weeks in fact last week while i was down in florida um it was supposed to go up and uh so we sent a guy who's been with me oh i don't know but a year um well, he was actually in his, and he was actually gone for a while, and he came back. So, but he's been around for a for a bit, and so he should know what he's doing. So we sent him out to install said top mounted cap, and I found out that when he got there, he pulled it out of the uh, the back of the truck and noticed a big dent in the side. So I should ask, what should you, what should a, an employee do if he notices a dent in the side of a top mounted cap? It's a good question. I mean, it depends. It really, it, it, I mean, obviously the front face of it, if it's in the front face or very vis visible, that's a remake. I mean, that's, it's, it's that simple. If you can try to pound it out, you can, but quite frankly, uh, if it's visible, uh, it's, it's a remake. I mean, so, okay. And, and, and uh, okay. It's our first one. So what do we know? Um, and what does he know? So he decides, nope, this thing has to be remade. Uh, this is unacceptable. So he decides to tell the homeowner, hey, Mr. Homeowner, the cap that we're about to put in your house today is dented. So, uh, yeah, we should either get you a new one or uh, or maybe you should get a discount on this one. <laughs> and uh, I, I wasn't real happy with that with that answer. So then the uh, my production manager looks at it and says, well, 
know, how much of a discount do you want? And the guy's like, well, at least 30%. He's like, uh, no, we can't give you that big of a discount. We're not even making that much. So uh, <laughs> we'll just go remake it for you and, and, and we'll come back and put it up. And so somehow they convinced uh, National Chimney to uh, to remake this whole thing for free because it got damaged in shipping. Ah, well, there you um, go. So I guess that'll get taken care of. Uh, but me, I was like, if you put it on the back side of the chimney, nobody's ever going to see it. Well, if it's and a custom made cap, you can't put it on the back side unless it's on the back side. Oh, I mean, it, it, well, oh, you, uh, yeah, okay. It's I guess I, I'm thinking if it's if it's perfectly rectangular, then it should be able to go either way, right? <laughs> well, the whole but, idea of having one is to make it to where it's not to where it fits perfectly. So you should be measuring and adding a quarter or a half inch to all sides. There are rare times when they are equal. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> If it was so, equal, yes, you could put it on the backside, but so, uh, but I, yeah, yeah. again, I, I, you know, I, I'm just telling you kind of what happened. I was gone in Florida and, and pop came back to find out, and so yeah, they're so they're reordering a new one and it's going to get put back up, um, in a few weeks. Um, so so but uh, but our our system is if a technician is sent out and finds some any sort of issue on the job, you don't tell the homeowner. Because my my thought process was okay, so as the homeowner, so this company sent a guy out to tell me that the cap that they want to put on is bad, and that I should get a discount. I'm like, what kind of an idiot runs this company? <laughs> so I don't know. I, I guess maybe that's that's too uh, harsh. But um, well, let's come back to this. Let's uh let's come back to this and talk about this after we get through all the production stuff or I mean, uh, all the introductions and stuff. But it, it's okay. a good point. A good point. So anyway, yeah. So anyway, that's uh, so that's going to get redone, and in any way, but uh, but the numbers are coming in better for us. Um, still, at least new to the coaching, to coaching with you. I've coached with other coaches, but uh, we're we've been stuck at one point eight million now since my other since my partner died six years ago, <clears throat> and been struggling with leadership. And I'll admit that, uh, but I got a good strong leader in there who's cracking down and holding people accountable and. And things are are uh, turning around quick. Good. So I, I think uh, I'm anticipating breaking two million again this year, um, and three next year. Well, we'll get you there for sure. And so, okay, Katie. About that, I'm the one that debriefs all the calls with the technicians in the field. <laughs> so there was that. Um, all right. So I'm Katie Poole. I'm in the Columbus, Ohio area. I own a company called The Chimney Guys. Um, we've been in business for going on, on five years. In July will be five years. And um, I've been with Chad for a couple of months now. Um, one of the things that Chad has helped me with a lot um, just recently, it's like this epiphany that it seems obvious, but somehow it wasn't. Um, and that's that my, my sweeps trucks are sales trucks. Like that sounds so stupid, right? Like, but obvious. So, you know, I've all this time been trying to to find and hire people who I think will make good chimney sweeps. Like, you know, they're going to be thorough and geeky and technical and you know what I mean? <laughs> and then hopefully they sell some stuff, right? But really I need sales guys who I teach chimney stuff to. And so that's been a recent click for me. So I changed my ad, you know, it's sales position. I hired a guy yesterday. He started today. Um, so I'm doing training with him here in house today. I'm going to get him on the replay app. Um, so we're just going to start sales training like right away. Um, so that that's been a big aha moment for me recently. And we have been consistently bouncing between two to five trucks for a about a year and a half now. Um, so I'm hoping that this new kind of perception, um, perspective on everything will help shift that to be a more consistent five to seven trucks. <laughs> well, there you go. And, and it will. And so, okay. Yeah. Uh, John. Thank you. Who are you? Where are you at? How long you work with me? And what's your big takeaway? Hi guys, my name's uh, John White. I own a company, Doctor Sweep. Um, been in business about thirteen years. Um, been working with Chad for a little over a year now. Um, 
got about 13 guys. Um, biggest thing, it's the biggest takeaway. It's it's it actually goes month to month because one month, you know, I'll have something that's you know life changing. The next month, I'll have another thing. The next month, I'll have another. So honestly, there's not one single thing. It's just a combination of a bunch of things that I've learned from them. Um, like one of the other guys said, yeah, I mean, to have somebody that's been in the business so long, it's like, why try to reinvent the wheel? It's stupid. You know, Chad's already been through all these mistakes. He's learned from them. So, you know, we can learn from him. And, you know, what took him 20, 25 years should only take us three to, you know, three years, you know, if we listen. So, um, actually, this is the first year, um, that I've come out that I'm coming out of the winter and, and I'm up, never been up. You know, last year, last year I was down, I was actually in Texas dad last year, this time and I was down, you know, 80,000 bucks. I'm up. I mean, I'm up like almost 18. I looked yesterday, 18,000. I mean, that's a freak. That's a, almost a $90,000 swing. That's huge. It's a hundred thousand dollar so, swing. Yeah, a hundred, almost a hundred. Um, so yeah, I mean, just just all the different advice, and you know, I think if I had to pick the most recent one, um, the, the condition, like Dee was saying, stuff that's so obvious. The condition report, you know, I used to just have a simple, you know, sheet, and through talking to Chad, he's got this whole awesome inspection you know process where it basically makes the guys they have to fill everything out they don't have a choice you know they have to measure everything they have to take the pictures they have to do everything that's one thing that we've been you know implementing that that's just changing everything so you know it forces the guys to sell and you know they don't have a choice so but yeah that's my story been with chad you know, over a year, and it's definitely You've been with changed. me like a year and a, over a year and a half. <laughs> or what? January? Okay. January. Yeah, you've been. Yeah, we, we started right, in bad. like November of twenty two. Oh, my bad. Sorry, <laughs> I got to look at my all my payments to you. Then I'll. Yeah, that or or, or uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that'll tell. That'll tell me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's. I mean. You know, like I said, every month, I mean, whether it's you, you know, recommending suppliers, I mean, just on the walls that you hooked me up with. I mean, I've saved thousands and thousands of dollars, Um, you know, the insurance jobs. I mean, I'll be honest, if I wasn't doing insurance jobs right now, I don't, I don't know how anybody's making it without them. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, you know, we've got you know, 30 job, 30, 34 jobs in the queue right now that are insurance jobs wow. I mean, at 20 grand a pop. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't have those, they're not all 20 grand. I mean, some of them are eight to 10, but I'd say on average, you know, 15, 17,000 bucks. Yeah. Every month it's something different. So I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, John. Thanks, uh, Bob. Uh, Bob uh, hey. Well, yep. Okay. Bob, you got the first, I guess. <laughs> Is there two Bobs now? <laughs> There's two Bobs now, but go ahead, Bob. Okay. Uh, Bob Fawnen, uh, Champs Chimney Service. Uh, also, a couple of years ago, we opened up a, uh, a, a, a fireplace store, which we call Champs Chimney Awning and Fireplace. I'm still using both logos and names, and it's working for me because, like, if somebody Googles Chimney Service, I take up two slots rather than three in the Google Maps, which is pretty cool. So I I, I, I knock somebody out of there. But anyway, Chad has helped me tremendously. Uh, he uh, helped me with the Google Maps, really, to get a great presence uh, with that program that he uses and that analyzes your area. And uh, that, that was uh, huge. Uh, so we got a really super nice uh, presence on Google Maps where a lot of my competition has to pay for that. You know, you see it says sponsored. Ours are all organic. Now, yeah, we're not on top, but Chad has, you know, it was worth the investment because now I don't have to pay Google ads like I used to, uh, you know, having to use Chad with that there. Uh, 
it, it is my 24th year in business. I am uh, kind of like a, a, a Mark Stoner story where, you know, it's, it's, it took me a long time to get out of the field. Uh, uh, I was just happy as a pig in a poke working one truck with a, with a helper for many, many years. Uh, and now uh, we have eight people in our company. Um, and we're not setting the world on fire money wise. I mean, it's kind of a relatively small market where I'm at. Uh, and when I were, I, you know, working with Chad really got me going and I was really doing good. But I got to tell you, when I added that fireplace store, man, I took off. I took on something that I wasn't ready for. Uh, uh, but what it what it has done is is also a blessing in disguise. Like, in other words, I, I'm struggling. You know, financially, I'm struggling. And uh, because I put all the money in the store and I had a loan for that, it's been hard to upgrade trucks. So I've had four motors go in the last six months. And yesterday I had a transmission go. So it's like, oh, my goodness, I feel like I, I'm, I'm under assault lately <laughs> when it comes to vehicles. But it's hard for me because my credit's not that good right now to just go out and buy new trucks or even five-year-old trucks. So th that's the struggle. But the one big thing that Chad really helped me with, well, two things really, is the nut report. Uh, really watching your numbers, you know, like I always want to know what are we going to, what are we bringing in this week? I'd like to see. Uh, uh, and also uh, the other thing too, that always stands out in chat. I've told you this a million times, the waterproofing packages, those are huge. You know, you do the crown coat or new crown, you do the flash seal, you do the chimney saver and an outside mount cap. That is huge. Uh, for years, we would be just doing a flash seal or, or, or a flu cap, and then people would call us back thinking that everything was solved because they spent a few hundred dollars with us. <laughs> and then you're going back and forth trying to fix things. Chad taught me, just go ahead and do all of those things and don't give them any other choice. And then, you know, you're at least you're bringing in 4500 or whatever. And if they do call back, well, you know, you, you, you made a great profit on that customer. And now, now you, you know, there's money in the bank for that, you know, so just a lot of things, uh, you know, very, very helpful. And I appreciate you, Chad. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Other Bob. Hey, um, <clears throat> Bob for uh, from Southern Maine, been in business probably 18 years, uh, been with Chad for three months, maybe, um, I guess he's helped uh, with a different perspective and way of explaining problems and areas in the business that I can improve on that uh, I seem like I, I should know or allows me to understand that I did know I just wasn't making the right decisions. Um, uh, knowing the numbers been huge. Um, Yeah, hoping hoping I'll at least get to a million plus this year. Been staying right around eight hundred thousand for the last few years, and can't quite break that number. We're gonna crack uh, it. We're gonna yeah. crack it. So, and good. Yeah. So, thanks, Bob. Okay, yep. Chris, I think you're. I think you're the last one. Because uh, I don't, Daniel, are you there? He's probably driving, but okay, Chris. Tell us who you are, how long you've been with us, and what's the biggest takeaway from working with me? Uh, Chris Tronis. I'm owner and operator of Chimney Restoration in Kansas City. I've been with Chad a little over a year and a half, I'd say. Um, started out with, um, if I recall, I think when we started, I was in the basement of my house. You were? <laughs> and uh, maybe two or three employees at the time. Now we're in a, a 5,000 square foot warehouse, 10 employees. Um, so with, with that all being said, it's, it's, um, guidance from Chad as well. And also I think what was most beneficial to me was, um, telling me the things that I don't want to hear. Um, and, uh, it started with, you know, my sales process and, and just being direct instead of, um, you know, being nice, I would say, um, it, it went, it was a good way to receive, the information and to motivate me too, but ultimately, you know, he, he gives you all the tools and, and all that stuff, but you got to put in the work too and, and execute. And, um, he does a good process of accountability, um, and doesn't do good with, um, 
you know, excuses or anything like that. So that's what I need um, to show up and, and produce and perform. But um, another thing, not to drag on too long, um, you know, issues with employees and understanding employees and the process and what to do, the hiring, the firing, uh, recourse, protecting yourself, um, and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I could, I could go on for a while, so I'll, I'll spare you all. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Chris. Uh, uh, Mike was swept away, just started yesterday. Hey. No. Go ahead, Mike. No, you're on mute. You're on mute. Mike was swept away here, based out of Largo, Florida, about uh, 25 minutes out of Tampa. Uh, company's been in business since 92. Uh, I took over managing back in the beginning of January uh, in 2022. Uh, owners are mostly retired now, so we handle the the day to day. I uh, met Chad last week at the my first convention that I went to. Uh, I was very eye opening. I didn't realize how tight knit a community this uh, industry was. Uh, coming from you know kind of the the refrigeration HVAC appliance world it is a uh, very dog eat dog you know you go to, to convention seminar stuff like that nobody's nobody's sharing the secret sauce nobody's everybody's kind of i'm not going to tell you what i'm doing don't tell me what you're doing let's just get what we can out of this and uh you know we'll fight out in the street later afterwards so mm -hmm. it's uh it's definitely really cool to come into an industry like this where everybody kind of comes together and is trying to not only better each other's business but keep the trade alive um really impressed You've had one session with me. What was your takeaway? Uh, I need help. I, I don't know nearly as much as I thought I knew. <laughs> yeah, we all been there. We right have... there with you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> right there with you. Hey guys, I'm still in there myself. So, I mean, we're still all learning together, you know, so... Uh, which is nice. As I learn stuff, what do I do? I pass it on to you guys. I mean, uh, and go from there. So, uh, okay. Well, we can't wait to watch you uh, grow as well, Mike. And so, Daniel, I see you're walking Hi. around. Hey, guys. So, uh, Daniel Ganey, own Advanced hey. Chimney Suite. Uh, we're in Ridge Spring, uh, South Carolina, but we service the Columbia, South Carolina, and the Augusta, Georgia areas. Um, this is actually my second go round with Chad. Uh, the first go round that I had with him was, uh, just getting the confidence to actually retire from my full-time W2 job with the federal government that was, uh, you know, working for the government for, um, I don't know, 30 years, 35 years. Uh, well, since I was 21, I'm 54. So whatever that, yeah, 30 years, 30 retired two years ago. But anyway, um, get getting the confidence to do that. Um, and over the course of the months, you know, Chad puts it like it is and excuse the language, but it's just like, you know, just fuck it, do it. You know, the business has been there 18 years, do it. The numbers are there. You're not going anywhere. So after working with him and he did, you know, it wasn't just getting the confidence to retire, but, you know, uh, tweaking some of the processes, um, you know, I, the way my business is set up is a little, little different than most businesses. Um, but it works for us. Um, but now the second go round, um, I am actually going, I am building a fabrication shop where we will begin building and fabricating our own custom caps and covers. Um, got the actual web domain chimneycap.net, not chimney caps, but chimney cap. Net. I was able to secure that, and that's actually going to be the name of the business. Um, and uh, so we're looking to get that off the ground. And since Chad has many years of experience and been successful in that area as well, I'm reaching out to him for him to help us establish that and get going. So uh, definitely, definitely, definitely has improved my lifestyle. Um gave me the confidence to walk away from a, a high six figure income with federal benefits um, to go in business, you know, full time for myself. I have five trucks on the road. I'm not in the field anymore. I uh, was in the field last year till Chad just said, get your ass out of the truck <laughs> and get your ass in the office where it needs to be. 
and uh, free up your time. So uh, we relate very well. I'm kind of the same way. I want it blunt because I put it blunt. Um, so we we relate well together. But um, looking forward to the next year or so of getting this uh, chimney cap business on the way and being successful with that. Thanks, Chad. No, you're welcome. Thanks, everybody. So the idea of going through this this time was uh, was literally for you guys to see if there's something that I'm helping someone else with with their biggest takeaway to get it in your mind, maybe that's something that you need to work on. So it's kind of a, a better way because, you know, generally since I don't work off of a workbook or, you know, a book, it's, you know, I'm here to help you with what you what's on your topic that you need now done and help you through that. And then we keep moving on and on and on. Right. So uh, every once in a while, you know, we have something like this. When we go through something like this, someone will tell me in their one on one. Well, how come you've never told me that <laughs> they worked with me for two years? Right. And so it's like, well, we, it never came up, you know, that we never got to that scenario. And and so I wanted everybody to kind of see, you know, what uh, some of the, everybody else's takeaways were. So, OK, so um, convention. Oh, hold on one second. Honey, can I have more coffee, please? And so um, my beautiful secretary. <laughs> um, anyway, um the convention for me, uh, I mean, I found Mike and I closed some chimney closer people. Uh, uh, White was sucked away. Convention was worth it for me. So, I mean, I'm I'm happy there. I didn't even advertise uh, coaching. I had a nice, I thought it was a nice speech. Uh, I'm not a boring speaker, as you all know. I got people laughing, but I got people recognizing what what they could be doing with their business and what they should be doing. Um, and honestly, I honestly, I'll tell you, I think it was the best speech I've ever had. I've never, and uh, I hope to, uh, to repeat that one uh, in, in the years to come because that was I, I really had a good time. Um, I had a lot of people come up to me and talk to me about some things, you know, uh, which is always good. Uh, and as Stoner, who was in the in there as well, pointed out to me that, uh, they, you know, that a lot of people were taking pictures of my uh, of my slides, which is always a big sign that, you know, people are actually uh learning from it so that was cool so big takeaway for me at the convention was everybody's hyped up on the vr uh and the virtual reality thing and so uh and in my mixed group as annie can probably attest to uh and i'm a little vocal about i'm not real i'm not real thrilled about the vr part of the vr i love what they're doing inside the vr I hate the bottleneck of having to buy goggles and babysit the goggles and they can only use the goggles when they're at work or if they take them home. I don't know. What they're doing inside of it is phenomenal. I mean, it is. It's phenomenal. However, uh, there's a couple corny things to me. You know, with the VR, you're holding these things and you're also putting on footies. You're doing a camera. You're doing all this stuff. A lot of the stuff is, you know, I'm not real sure is really something that has to be really like trained into a thing. You know, the, the process can be, you could do it with 3d. You could do it with 3d and there is some interactional 3d because I've been in this space looking at this, as you guys all know about chimney closer uh, uh, in this space and looking at different things for over a year now. And virtual reality was on my radar probably maybe may of last year. And and it wasn't even a cost development. I just kept, I kept looking at, you know, and Mark said it the best. Stoner's like, well, Google's done it. Uh, Facebook's tried it. You know, all these big places have tried it. And it's not that what is in it is what is good or bad. It's just the fact that, you know, you have to have the goggles, you know, you, you know, and for business wise, um, you know, the only where it's been massively successful is in the medical field where they can literally train on surgeries and different things with the VR and do that. As for us training, it is, it was pretty cool watching it go up, but I don't need a VR set to 3d going up a chimney and walking around and doing all that. So, I mean, I want to, I want a system of training that I could give to five people at one time and they can go home with it you know, and learn not just here's the VR, I'll take you out of the field. Or when you first start, you know, be on this VR thing for the next week or two, we'll put you out of the field intermittently. I don't know. I just, ugh, I just, there's something just stinky about it with me 
and they want to put me on the they want to put me on on the board to help with it and unfortunately i think i'm going to decline it because i'm i want to i want to do some different things and so because my thought is if the ncsg and i'm on a couple I'm on a board on the ncsg that's actually uh marketing the vr i'm the marketing the uh, uh board uh they're putting so much money into an app for training and and the problem with this training is is literally only initial training is literally only your first 10 percent of the business the other 90 percent is, is doing everything out in the field and getting sales and doing everything I want to use a 3D slash uh, augmented reality where you can take, I mean, this is what, this is my vision. So watch this. And I'm actually in Coach's Corner on Sweeping Magazine. I'm writing an article. I'm, I'm the next month's article and I'm writing about this. What if you guys had this? Uh, hear me out. You had your iPad or your phone and you show up to a house, you do all the sales greeting. You literally take a picture of it and and then you you do your camera inspection. You put the pictures in this a certain app. You go up. You go outside. And you hit the app, and you do that, and automatically it tells you everything's wrong that it sees. It recognizes the AI that it clears the combustibles, tuck pointing, back wall's bad, damper's bad, needs parging, liner gives you the liner size. Uh, you know, tells you the cap size, measures it for you. Uh, tells you, you know, prices out your waterproofing, prices out how, I mean, does it all for you, literally, bam. Where you literally hit the pick the pictures and everything is done for you and all you have to do is edit it if it's off a little bit. Now that's an application that will sell and help the industry tremendously. Because you can almost put a dummy out there to do it. You know, not that we don't want to still train our people, but I mean, now you're talking about you're, you're you're correcting a lot of mistakes. You're 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 forcing the real estimates that you want. Every one of you had guys, you know, that that didn't that literally would estimate only what they want to do. Me and Mike at Swept Way just talked about it yesterday. You know, guys are only selling what they want to install in the eat what you kill model. Well, now you take it to the other way, and you can't get away with not selling a back wall rebuild. You can't get away. With, you know, with with a uh, a rusted damper and not doing it, whatever. All just all these. That's where I want to see uh, our organization spending money, and they're not. So that's why you know that's that's something that I'm looking into and do that. But that's my on the convention. Everything else, um, it came up yesterday in our in our uh, half meeting in our mixed group. Uh, I've never divulged, and maybe not to you guys either. My credit card processing company. Uh, guys, I get wholesale rates. I get like 1%. And it's a sliding scale depending on the card. So like if it's a business credit card, you're going to get dinged like 2, 2.1, 2 2.25% plus like 15 cents. If it is a personal debit card, you're getting charged 1% plus 15 cents. It's like half of what you're getting charged now from everybody else. Uh, the, ha the guy has card readers, but you can also do it uh, through the app, process through the app on your phone. Uh, yes, it does not connect to your to your CRM. If you switch to my CRM this summer, hopefully it'll be out this summer, uh, Service Galaxy, it will be connected to Service Galaxy. And you will be able to process through Service Galaxy. Um, and we will try to get it to where we can process through other other stuff too, but uh that's on that's on Chris, the processor guy. But um, so if you're if you're paying a lot for your processing and, and you want a better processor. Um, I'm just going to put the number right now in here. It's Chris. I had to look up his name, his last name, because I have him as Chris's pros as a credit card processor on my phone. I always forget. Uh, but it is Chris Stabil, and his number is... It's here, 940... 206-0170. I guarantee you guys, he'll save you 50% on your credit card processing. And they have another program that they have that I, I don't know if he had, if they offer this for everybody, but he offered it to us and we declined it. But where you get zero fees of processing and it charges the customer. Five That's what I, yeah, I don't mind. I, the, uh, I think I pay $5 a month to merchant services and 
it charges the customer 3%, but I get no charges on my end at all. And and you can sign that up with Chris. I don't, I say 5%. I don't remember what his percentage is. We just declined it uh, to do it. Uh, and, and and it is something that comes up in our management meeting, and we may be switching to it eventually. Um, yeah. What what's the verbiage that you use when you when you hand it over to the the homeowner? What what's the verbiage? So well, the funny thing the funny thing is, hold on, Daniel. The funny thing is is it wouldn't change for me because our verbiage is flat out is we're charging you three percent if you're you're charging over if you do over five thousand dollars with us it's supposed to be twenty five hundred but five thousand dollars we're charging you a three a three percent fee on top of it and we put it in as a line item because we're allowed to do that in Texas and so that's yeah. what we. Do. So there wouldn't be that much of a stretch. So Daniel, what do you say? It's probably the same thing that we would say. Well, so what we do is when the customer calls our customer service rep, when they actually make the initial call and they are booking the appointment, the customer service rep tells the customer that we accept cash, check, and we do accept credit card. But just to let you know that the credit card company does charge a 3% fee that does not come from us. It comes from the credit card processing company. So we will accept it, but we just want them to know that. And then if they book the repair um, and we're taking a down payment, the technician actually reminds the customer of that. And that's, you know, we still get a lot of credit cards. You know, we still get a lot of credit cards, even though they're, they're, they're being charged a fee. I think we, we just did a $21,200 job and they put all of it on a credit card, you know, and they paid the 3%. But as long as you let the customer know up front, and my suggestion would be letting them know just in your script that you have for your customer service or office people, you know, make your script where they're letting the customer know ahead of time so the technician's not telling the customer when it gets there. You need to put yeah. it on your line. You need to put it in a line item or, you know, where you're on your invoicing, you can put notes that people see, you know, down at the bottom left or something. You should, you should put it down there where it's there all the time. You know, if you run a credit card, if you pay with your credit card, there's a 3% fee. The credit card company charges you is what you should put. So you're saying just write it out. My main thing is, is like, is it, you know, does it just say administrate administrative fee or just something short and sweet? I don't, I don't want to hijack the, the meeting. It's all good. I just put credit card processing fee, okay. credit card processor fees. So they, it, it they may have for verbiage me. for you. They may have verbiage for you to tell you what to tell them. If you ask them, what, what is the legality in my state to put here of what this is? Yeah, they they pushed me off. They said that for their own protection, they advised that I seek that information out myself because Kansas is a little different. <clears throat> but Not in Kansas all, anymore. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so Mike, uh, uh, where did you go? Shamans, is he here? Where? There, you're way up on the right now. Uh, tell me about your takeaway in the convention. Well, it's not so much about me anymore. It's about uh, the staff. And I did bring three employees, my general manager, my two sales guys, and, uh, and wanted to, to get them, you know, thinking more, you know, big picture stuff. And, uh, so no, I mean Michael said he got a couple of nuggets. He was couldn't wait to get back to the office on Monday and get and, and I don't remember what the exact nuggets were, but uh, but yeah, I've probably been uh, I've been in business for forty one years. I did uh, actually join and go to a few conventions back in the eighties, but then I dropped out and didn't really get serious until about two thousand and eight uh, when I started building the company up again. But uh, but no, conventions always nice because there's always some little thing you get. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I was at your, at your presentation. So that was, uh, that was interesting. And, and, uh, you know, a bunch of other ones, I mean, the, the opening keynote was really good. Um, you know, and then hearing about the, the, you know, the different certifications, um, that are out there, you know, and, 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 you know, that's something we're, we're looking at is which one do we go with, you know, probably don't need to do both or whatever, but, uh, but no, it's, it's always, I always come back with a little, you know, new energy and, and, uh, and, you know, this was one of those. Okay, good. Okay. So Mickey has joined us. Hi, Mickey. Both Mickey's have joined us. I don't know where the other one went, but uh, uh, Mickey with Ge Geeko. Uh, so we did, we did a round table just introducing ourselves. 
and 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 how long you've been in business and what is your big takeaway with working with me lately mickey keller uh gosh i've been in business my family's been in business uh since 1948 i've been in business about 33 years uh in the at the hearth industry since 2006 uh been working with chad since he started coaching um got a lot of takeaways from chad um he has really uh helped us get our sops together um our employee manuals um He's helped my brother and I um, work together as a team. Um, we're now working with uh, Kent to hire a COO, which I'm nervous and excited about. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Chad's uh, gotten us in a whole new direction. And uh, he's not only our coach, but he's our friend. And that's what makes it nice is that, you know, I can pick up the phone anytime and, and give you a call. Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mickey really is. Uh, they have been with me four and a half years. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, and we, and we very rarely have nothing to say. It's all we have, we work and we work. And so, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, and, and I, and I'm patting myself on the back because, you know, I talk to other coaches and I ask them uh, what their average time is with their clients are and they always say about eight months to a year and i look at them like last year when i was in, in a, like a, a a zoom call with a bunch of guy coaches and they're all saying a year roughly a year roughly and i'm like uh they don't quit or they come back if they do and so i, mean, I don't know i don't really and everybody's like oh no, really how long and i'm like okay really i'm <laughs> seriously and so uh, you know, and I guess maybe maybe it's a little nichey thing that you know because I'm a chimney guy and we talk and I'm venturing out outside of chimneys right now. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. But okay, so we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna finish Mike's little cap talk and then we're gonna talk about hiring uh, and uh, uh, hiring and ads and any and then kind of we're gonna go through quickly with that and then we'll we'll start a little roundtable. So let's take let's take maybe three, four minutes, just if you got to go use the restroom, get a coffee or drink, whatever, whatever you're going to do, let's just be back in about uh, three or four minutes. Okay. Okay.
Okay. All right. So, <sighs> kind of, I, you know, as, as I went and uh, did my little rounds here real quick in the last five minutes, so I started thinking about everything that everybody said and and where I'm at with what we're doing, how I started off the meeting with the Masters. And, 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 and I'm kind of coming to a conclusion as I'm starting up on the new coaching program. Uh, what I'm going to be trying to sell online is uh, – this this is a funny, not true statement, but it is what fixes everything in the beginning. Sales fixes everything, guys. I mean, you hear Stoner say that before. Sales fixes everything. So you fix sales and then you work on everything else. So once you get the sales, you can start doing it. Now, of course, you may have to fix some other stuff first, but the idea is always get the sales efficient and working and process accountability. And then, you know, at the same time, hopefully you have the right people, if not, you're going to have to find the right people to do it. So, uh, but that, that kind of seems to be um, as I'm scaling and, and watching and uh, what we're doing, it's just the full every day, all day, every client being managed with the sales in the sales department. There is no more, like I said, let it go. Uh, and, and, you know, just give you a bunch of notes and yell at you at meetings, you know, or ask you why you did or didn't do this and all that. So that 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 just comes to to mind to talk about it. So if you're not if you're not active or have somebody who's active in your business on every job in the office critiquing it, that's that that is something you need to start working on immediately. That I mean it's very easy. We can work on it with you next week more if you want to see my exact program. But that right there is key to getting more consistent sales. And then obviously everything behind it is where you start making a building a better company. So uh, there's that. Okay. So uh, let's just go back to Mike or you, you are, um, you know, you're getting into the caps, the guy, you got a dent. Uh, I mean, definitely uh, you should be taking the caps out of the box prior to showing up to see that it's dented. Um, um, the, uh, I mean, I don't know if the guy did right or wrong out there. If your policy is to not talk to the client, then he shouldn't have. But in the same aspect, I mean, the guy was in a hard place. You guys are out of town and he was at the place with a dented thing. And so it's just procedures and stuff. Uh, what did you learn from it, you know, so that it doesn't happen again. So that you can put it, put it in more of a SOP of, okay, as soon as something shows up, it comes out of the box and we refuse it if it's, if it's dented. And so, uh, which is, as you start getting the more full outside mount caps, full coverage caps, which I don't care how big you are, everyone should be eventually getting to the point where they're making their own caps. I'll promise you it will save you more money, even though it may not feel like it is. And you're going to have questions. What am I going to do with the guy when I'm not busy? Trust me. You all have stuff that someone could do if they're not making caps. You, I mean, literally going to get supplies. You, you could, you could bring, you know, if you're if anybody's going to Home Depot any time a week, that can be stopped by having a cap guy. He can go to Home Depot for everybody the day before or keep you in. There's so much a cap guy can do outside of caps if you're not busy that he can do. I mean, Logan, I think your guy does more stuff than just caps, does he not? Sorry, I was having to okay, unmute, myself. Myself. unmute myself. Yeah, uh, my cap guy is really gifted. Uh, I don't even know how I got him to be honest, but yeah, he'll troubleshoot stuff on jobs. He has a lot of heavy machinery work. So he trained all our guys on how to use lifts when we do lift rentals. So now I've got multiple guys, you know, competent and comfortable using lifts and it all came from my cap guy. Uh, he can weld, he can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, he fixes all of our stuff, changes brakes and, so he does all of our auto repair stuff too. So yeah, he, it's super helpful. Yeah. And it's that position that you don't know you need or you're scared to, or you're scared to pay like, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I mean, really you look at it, that utility guy that can make caps too. I mean, that's, that's just, that's just how you would do it. Um, of course, my cap guys, they're just cap guys. We, they're busy enough. Uh, they're, they're, there's never a week that they don't get at least 30 hours uh, generally uh, a week, if not, 40 to 45 but but uh okay so 
Uh, anything more on that, Mike? Well, I was, I don't know if I said, but I, I mean, our procedure is instead of talking to the homeowner, because I think that just looks bad, you go back to the rep, the sweep, salesperson, whatever you want to call them, um, who set everything up and and let them handle it. Uh, let them decide if that should be pounded out, if it should be returned, if we, you know, or, and let him talk to the homeowner. Because, um, yeah, this thing, that, I just think that guy made us look really bad. And um, yeah, I mean, and that's it. it's kind of it's been since I've been in this situation. You know, I agree and I disagree at the same time. It just depends on how it's handled. Because you also look at the guys also showed up and he's in front of the people already, and now he's supposed to say, "Well, I can't install it," you know, uh, and, and or call you guys, you know. And it was a weird situation. You're also out of town, you know, everybody. And so I don't, I, I don't know. If deep diving into this uh, 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 is doing anything more than to help out to figure out what your company wants to do in the next scenario, this is pound, dented caps. If you unless you you really can't pound them out. That's the this, this kind of sheet melt. You cannot pound it out. Now, now can it be? And is it on the backside? Like literally, if you dent up the skirting or the backside of a cap uh, lid that you cannot see it, like if the roof is up and it's just, you know, it's a far enough to, and you cannot see that backside, you know, if it fell into that scenario, you know, you might install it without letting them know, uh, you know, but generally, generally, I mean, we almost remake everything if it's like that, or, because with us, all we do is take it back, take the, if it was the skirt, just take it back, we'll pull the skirt off, and put, another, put another base on it. So we don't have to re remake the whole thing. And so, yeah, can I case, say something real quick? Yeah. So what you said earlier, you and I actually, I, when we first started, you taught me this and it, it made a huge difference. Like whenever we get a shipment in, whether it's gas logs, crown mount caps, inspect it first. Because if yeah. you catch it, if you catch it at the shop, you know, you're not wasting. And, and it's amazing. I never realized how many, how many broken things we got in until we started doing it. So that, what you taught me with that was huge. <laughs> I mean, because then, you know, we'd send the tech to go, we catch it. And then, you know, you don't even send the tech out there. So that, I just wanted to point that out. That was something that you taught me. That big. Well, you get into a, a fight with the shipping company if you yeah. don't catch it when they, when they drop it. Yeah. And that's, and you're going to lose every time because they have all the power, right? They're like yeah. that, well, we're not going to do it. I mean, we had, we had, oh God, this is probably four or five years ago, we had a monster three cap copper hip and ridge uh, caps. They were all over like 80 inches big, uh, shipped in three different huge monster crates. And they literally were driven, two of them were literally driven through forklifts into the side of the, and we build coffins. So we actually build coffins. So they're not exposed at all. Forklifts into both of them, and both caps completely smashed. And obviously, when the guy when when the guy took them, uh, he refused the two. But I thought that company, I and those are copper caps. We fought that company uh, for that for a year. I mean, we remade them and sent them, sent them out at no charge. We fought that company for a year to get that money back, and we did win. But holy crap, they they, they do everything in their power. To, to not pay you back and all that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, uh, so we always, I think, and that, this is, this was back then. I think we always do the uh, little extra shipping on there when we ship out that has, uh, I think insurance or something. I don't remember how that all goes. Uh, Mickey probably knows more about that uh, and because they're shipping all the time. But, um, but I think we do pay a couple extra dollars for insurance. If I recall. It's definitely worth it. Yeah. And so, uh, okay. Well, uh, hiring and ads. So if you're hiring right now, if you've seen my ads and how I hire, there we go. I got that line in my face again. Um, oh, go the wrong way. Um, is when you take out ads, guys, don't say you're a chimney company. Do not talk about chimneys. Talk about the opportunity. Talk about what, what do not write an ad like everybody else. I mean, you guys, most of you guys have used my ads and, uh, and I can, and I can send it to anyone who wants it. Just, 
uh, just text me and then I can send it over to you. But I mean, mainly, I mean, my ads just flat out go, you know, I mean, if you're looking for a, a, a sales guy, you know, the ads flat out are, you know, uh, are, are you tired of dead end jobs that are getting you nowhere that you really have no opportunity? Do you really want an opportunity to learn in a, in a specialty niche that is busy all year round? You know, uh, do you want, are you teachable? Are you, and I don't remember whatever, all I say in that ad and stuff. Most of you have it and you've used it and it works, I think for most of you, but, but even if you're hiring, even if you're hiring a worker, I mean, I know you like it indeed. You can't, you can't change what your name says. So they see what your name is, but I mean, not on, not on Craigslist and some of these other ones, you can do it where it doesn't show your name. Uh, but, but the idea is, is to get the ad about the opportunity and, and, and all of that. And also it's okay to go and tell them your frustrations. Like, we need people that are teachable. If you're not teachable, don't apply. You know, if, if if you're afraid of heights, don't apply. We're not a roofing company, but we are on roofs. You know, la, la, la. you know, are, are you are you do you have the it? Can you sell? And I don't mean like you sold furniture because you don't sell furniture. The furniture sells itself. You're an order taker, right? I mean, these are the things that I say in my ads. I'm trying to attract people that want the money and who can who can who can uh uh physically do the job and so um yeah and so we unfortunately in houston we had a a a 50 year old lady apply in houston and they were about to hire her and i went on her facebook and i looked at her and she and she like she killed every she uh, john terry and brian she killed the interview with all of them. And I'm like, does any of you go to their Facebook and see what she looks like? And and I don't care if you're black, white, or Mexican, but she was a black older lady. She was probably 50 pounds overweight and had never had an outside sales job. And I'm like, like, I don't think so, guys. I mean, why don't you just, if you really love her one, and, and she's good, have her do a ride along and have her lift a ladder. <laughs> And then get up on a roof and just see if she'll do it. And of course she'll try to, you know, and after talking to them, they called her back and start talking about the job. She declined the job. And I'm just like, guys, what are you thinking? You know, I mean, uh, and I'm not saying a 50 year old woman can't do the job, but you better look at her and, and she better have some physicality to her that she's done jobs like this. I mean, you know, when you have pretty nails, and and all you've done is corporate style sales, you're probably not going to be very good on a roof selling for me, you know, and I don't care who you are, you know, and so uh, same thing, like, I don't think I'd hire a, if it was a man, a 50 year old dude who's never been on a roof, I, I have the same opinion of him, you know, I mean, you probably aren't going to go out and physically do this job, because even though the sales are great, and you have an opportunity here, you're going to do stuff that you've never done before, and your body's, your body's going to hate you. And uh, and you're gonna your body's gonna tell your mind you can't do this job very long, and so, um, but that leads to the next thing. Who here does not have a hiring ad out right now? Does not. Shame on you. <laughs> Why do you keep hiring? Why do you keep an ad out? It's part. It should be part of your marketing budget. You should always have an ad out because you never know who's gonna apply that is 10 times better than everyone you have in your company. And then you can't not, not hire the guy. Right. And that leads Sorry to the next thing. What's that, Andy? I, I said, I agree with you, but I'm in the field. I'm three, three guys over staff right now. So, I'm, but I agree with what you're saying. It, you should always be hiring. I mean, you should at least have an ad. It should at least be tickling the ads and looking at them to see if they're there. I mean, because I will tell you, almost every one of us could let someone go and replace them with someone better right now. There's probably a never a time in your whole life that you're going to own a company that if somebody, that someone better applied, that you could let somebody go or you could hire them without having to let anybody go. You know, I mean, obviously that's the better scenario. You're just adding to it versus having to replace somebody. But, I mean, even with Andy, you being seven or six deep in uh, apprentices, you just never know. You never know who's going to knock on that door. 
And if you and if you close the door and aren't home, you're never going to find out. That's why you just keep keep hiring. I mean, um, we we and it's been it's probably been three years since I haven't had an ad out. We're constantly uh, looking and getting it. And I just put it. I just put a a thing to the to my sales or to my management team yesterday. I said we haven't been putting an ad out for for uh, crew members lately. I said we need to keep the crew mem crew member one out there, but let's change the ad to be like super crazy experience stuff. So I mean, just because we don't we're not hiring really. So why don't we make the ad be like like a uh, master carpenter is gonna gonna call me only like that type of person is gonna call mm -hmm. that kind of person I would hire. I don't care where I am in business. You know, if a guy calls up and says, I've been working for this construction company for years, 20 years, and, uh, you know, I can build a house, I can climb on roofs, and and I'm just ready for a change uh, of atmosphere, and, you know, I really liked your ad, let's talk. I'm like, okay. You know, start seeing some of his work, and like, yeah, you're hired, man. You know, we'll put him in our look, you know, ask about culture and different things, and and go from there. And uh, so I told the guys yesterday, I said, Juan, my, Juan, my sub, those guys are great, but, I mean... Uh, if Juan ever did decide to shit on me, I mean, I'd have four trucks go away instantly. And I don't have the guy, I don't have anybody that can replace him on some of the stuff we're doing. Chimmy wise, yes, but we're getting into a lot of different things uh, uh, that we're doing and stuff. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you guys, last month, we did a bathroom remodel at DFW Airport. <laughs> Came off a chimney job. We're just telling people that, you know, because we do tile, uh, and tiled fireplaces. The guy, the guy was the bitter guy for DFW. He goes, show us some of your works. So we show him some of our work. He goes, but it's a took us to DFW. We had to get very cl easy clearance. Showed us this bathroom, and the guy's like, Juan's like, I gotta, I gotta have that done in two nights. We gave him a price, which was stupid high, because I, I told him we told him we don't want to really do it, but like, we gave him a stupid high price, and the guy, the guy approved it. Like within three minutes of sending it over, a <laughs> forty thousand dollar tile job, and they supplied the tile. I mean, I mean, just, I mean, I don't know what kind of company I'm going to be in a year from now because th th those guys are finding shit to do uh, that's in our chimney realm. It's like crazy, you know. But uh, but we are selling a lot of remodels right now, and uh, our TV ads going well. So anyway, hiring and hiring and marketing. We talked about marketing last time we talked, and I think we talked about guys. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that I've found uh, in the last year for ourselves uh, is getting to that uncomfortable marketing dollar thing spend to keep the keep the phones ringing when we're slow. And uh, that if you're going to spend money, that's where you spend your money at. And so, uh, literally, is spend money on marketing because what's weird about our business is you can spend it today. But you guys know someone might call up, maybe get an estimate today, but not buy it till three or four months from now. So the more the idea is the more estimates you get now, you know, the hopefully more you'll do now. But boy, it changes the summer. Your summer changes the more estimates you get out now. And so uh and then and then even your your fall. But uh um who here isn't spending at least eight percent on marketing? I'm just now getting there. It, but I wasn't. I was spending like point zero something last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, I found out. I found out we were only spending four percent. So that's why we're doing it. Who who was just talking, Logan? Yeah, I'm not doing eight percent. Yeah. And so, um, but I mean, that's how you're going to grow, guys, right? I mean that if you want if you're in growth mode, I mean I think a lot of people forget, you know, to 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 grow. There's that one little thing called advertising and marketing that is going to make you have more clients, and you have marketing is one of those things. Obviously, make sure you have a good marketing company, but you also got to know the kind of marketing that works in in your in your area. I mean, uh, does social media work? Does AdWords work? Does just putting money in SEO work? You know, Google ad where Google profile, you know, in the map pack, obviously that works for most people in in the city, in the city stuff. 
you know, uh, but paying people to do it uh, and knowing how to do it is where it was, where it gets, you know, uh, if, if you're not in the map pack of where you're at consistently, uh, yeah, you need to pay someone to do it. Cause if you've been doing it, if you've been in business three or four years and you're not in the map pack, but you've hired other people to do it or have someone in-house doing it, guess what? It doesn't take three to four months to be in the map pack if you hire someone that knows what they're doing. I mean, if you if you've had someone doing it for six months and you're not in the map pack, well, they don't know what they're doing, and so it's that simple. Um, because it's not that hard to get there, and so uh, any questions on marketing anybody their business? Chad, yeah, might sound like an idiot, but what what is a map pack? Map pack and we work on yours constantly and you're killing oh right map now. i thought you were seeing something else sorry map map pack no yeah. you're killing it right now one of your locations crashed it's that crappy one you had all the bad reviews on the other ones are all doing great we got it back and so uh but uh yeah you're doing really well john i mean you're getting more you're getting more calls than ever right now right compared to last year yeah no we're doing yeah on that side of it we're doing real well yeah but shit, so, sometimes I wish I was only spending five percent on advertising. My advertising's, it, I spent a two hundred sixty thousand last year. Yeah, and so, but guys, I mean, that's you know, that's just something that I mean, and 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 to be honest with you, I'll be honest with you. Probably the reason why I was able to to hit, you know, two million, three million, four million, was because. I always had that risky business thought of fuck it, I'm gonna advertise and and uh, I thought Google AdWords was was awesome when it came out because I could not have to pay for it and I could go broke like gambling with it and I would always get jobs out of it to pay for the advertising. So I could go broke on Monday and Tuesday and th and Wednesday like literally put a thousand dollars a day and I wouldn't even spend a thousand dollars a day, but I'd put it up to a thousand dollars a day, probably spend three or four hundred bucks. Versus when I had it on like fifty dollars a day, you know, and I would put it up to a thousand, and in the off season you won't even click through that, but it'll put you to number one, the first place, first thing on, on the right keywords, and I probably get five or six extra uh, uh, estimates or inspections that I wouldn't have gotten. And uh, and think sure. about it. Okay, charge. Hold on one second. If you're charging, you know, two hundred fifty to four hundred dollars an inspection, big deal. If I get six of them, I just paid for it. If I sell one thing, I'm, I'm in the profit. So what was the question? Who, who spoke what's up? What's a good ROI on marketing? I'm what? What? What's a good return on investment? If you spend a certain amount, how much do you... Because you, if, if something's not working and it's dumb, you obviously want to switch to something else. But what's a good gauge? So it depends on the medium. I've always liked the 10X on it. And that's the dream world. If you get 10x, you spend 100, you get 1,000. You know, uh, you spend 5,000, you get 50 grand out of it or more. You know, I mean, that, that's, you know, and that's a hard number to hit. So I would say minimum uh, of it would be three to five, three to five, five X. You know, you spend 500, you get at least three or four grand out of it. You know, um, uh, and, and that's where you, that's where, where you come to getting deeper in, in and knowing your numbers. And so, like right now, our ads uh, on TV have they they have grossed more than we paid, but net profit we're still in the we're still at a negative. But we still have another we have a full week left of ads this week before we see uh, if any of these close. Now we've this was I don't even know how many uh, estimates we did last week um, uh, through the through the uh, the TV ads, but I mean we we were. Uh, Starting last week, before we got through, we we had like sixty thousand dollars in estimates out, and I think we had closed roughly twelve to fourteen thousand, and I'm paying ten thousand a month. So it's the first month; it's a bad month for really for for uh, being a chimney company. Um, and so I'm just gonna it right now with the TV ads. I'm just hoping to pay uh, for the first. My my goal was March and April, pay for the ad. And then hopefully, come May and June, the TV ad's starting to get some getting some some clarity to people. And come May, 
I start doing fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a month just due to the ads. And if not, I mean my time frame is is the end of June. If by the end of June it's not uh if it's not breaking even uh, or making uh at least you know some extra money off of it, I'll probably turn them off. So we'll see. You know, it it just it's also one of those things. What happens with TV? We have a tracking number on on the TV ad, but a lot of times what people do, and this is what you hear from everybody else who has TV ads, is they see you, and then they Google you. They didn't even write your number down, and they Google you. And right now we are up on how many job, how many uh, new opportunities we're getting. So it's hard to say that maybe the ad is doing better than before because they 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 don't always tell you they saw the TV ad. I have I don't know that. That's what that, that's what I've been told from all the other guys that are doing that. So anyway, any questions on that before we go 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 around the round table and uh, any questions? Uh, on marketing, hiring, convention. All right. So we only have 30 minutes left. So when we talk about issues, uh, I kind of want everybody to kind of get in the chat. What in the chat, if everybody could spend one minute, two minutes, uh, um, Writing what your big issue in there, because we'll see if everybody has maybe the same issue to go around and talk about. Um, so right now, spend a minute and type in what issue you want to talk about right now that's going on in your company. Type it in the chat. And don't be shy. You, know, you guys aren't shy, so put it in there. All right. Let's see here. All right. All right. Let's see here. Does anyone have any app for remodeling sales process? I need to do a 30 day review with my new office manager who is more qualified than GM and office manager who just fired. She wants to be GM at any time of work investment. She'll give her a raise. Sales manager is just one of the many hats I wear on the company. The others are finance women. No being lazy. I mean, us being sore because weather. Not being lazy. Setting clean expectations for your sales team. Managing sales consistently, sales are good. Man. Telling you all the details of uh, the whole company every day. Training processes start and finish. I wanted to get the gas side of the service business high. Regular, oh, okay. I'm with Andy Sales Management. Well, we're back to sales. We'll start with sales. And, uh, and, um, and that kind of goes, you know, kind of like with Mike's too, uh, remodeling sales process. Um, 
I'll just kind of go over a remodeling sales process. I mean, literally just using your CRM, but you got what you got to do is Mike is you got to put a bundle in. You got to bundle a sale all in one line item on your CRM. Okay. And then you edit it when you go up to show up to do it. So like if there's a little bit more of an install, more piping, uh, just whatever, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see what we're stepping into an already operating business, turning into nothing. Conflict with a hand, but I'm taking a person and I am certified to the sales aspect level and place. Okay. I kind of sales a little bit there too and management. Okay. So guys, the process of, I mean, some of you might sell two or three inserts, five, three or four wood stoves. You know, I'm not saying niche down, but start taking your best sellers and start building a full one line item where it is a one click for the sales guy to just go in there and edit possibly how much pipe or any connections that may need, may, may need to do. Like, I mean, that, that is how you do it. Like we do that. I mean, they're gas log sales. I mean, gas logs are not just the logs, right? It's the logs, the burner, a, 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 a valve or a remote control, you know, all of that. And so we just, you know, we go in there and, and we have a, stupid well this is where we're just stupid we have way too many gas log sales uh gas log items in our deal but it is a one line item. it's 18 inch you know uh uh variable remote uh 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 you know what is it the g45 or g not g45 i i forget the burner the, the remote control or the burner and the remote is in it whatever that whatever that uh is called uh well, that's what we really like selling now we do not like adding we do not like adding remotes anymore. We love the 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 uh, the Peterson uh, one that has the remote built into it underneath the burner. That is the best one to do. It sets up just like a direct vent. It's vented. It is awesome, uh, and it's stupid expensive, and you make a lot of money on it. So um, that's that's what we love right there. So if you guys don't know this story, and this is kind of get off the topic, but just. I hate gas logs. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. So what did I do three years ago is that uh, I wanted to take them off, uh, uh, just like completely stop selling them. Cause I had, I owed Mickey so much money at one point uh, that I hated to sit there having to write a check in March, you know, a 30 freaking grand of, cause the guys didn't sell anything. So the guy, they didn't want to stop selling them. So I said, great. Add a thousand dollars to every line item. Cause I don't care. And they're like, okay. And guess what? We still sell a shitload of gas logs. And if they don't want them because they're too expensive, great. I don't care. So they got to buy $1,000 and and and, and, and uh, 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 $1,000 premium to buy from us. So, and it's funny is, is we still sell as many gas logs as we used to. So um, now I love selling gas logs because I make an extra $1,000 on them. I'm going to move over here. And so, um, but okay. So sales process, let's just go right over the guys go out and they sell and the management side of this is simple. Every morning or every evening, somebody in your business looks at every inspection and every sale and every estimate and every deal and goes through it. And you start, you start getting, uh, you start giving them the notes and reminders of what they're missing and asking questions. Um, and you flat out uh, start building the reasons of why you need uh, your, your uh, meetings starts getting meeting content. All of it is starting meeting content because just because you told them everybody else needs to know as well. Um, and it also, this is the preamble to what I'm going to say next and what we do now. Every single job gets called to a manager before they sell it, while they're there. And it's part of the sale. And now our managers on the phone actually help talk to the customers when they're sitting down and, and are part of the sales conversation when they sell it. Every single job is like that now. So it's not left up to everybody. They they know that. So management knows the jobs. They know the client. The client trusts us because now we're part of the deal and the management, you know, and it never, it never gets into a asking for discount stuff. It's, it's not, that's never been part of what, what happens. And so, you know, running a sale and, and and this is hard to do for some of you guys, you know, and I'll tell you because it's, it's a, it's a different scenario and 
and it may feel like you're micromanaging, the fact of the matter is you're not. The guys actually like it because now it's not just them and the homeowner. You're bringing in the management to talk about the job, help out with the job, talk about you know, you know, a little bit more of the availability of the product possibly when we can get it done. There, there's just so much to what happens when you put someone in the office as part of the sales process. I mean, and it sounds hard and I'll tell you, and there's a reason why I didn't do it for 25 years. We just started doing this last summer, you know, and, uh, hey, did he ever... and... Sorry. go ahead. Who said that? That was Have Logan, I... but I, I think he was talking to somebody else. Oh, okay. Super right. sorry. I was trying to mute. I, I was muted it. Sorry. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, the it really is the process of being involved or having somebody in your business involved, not in front of the client. And so talking to the people and, and getting there and and asking questions. I mean, it, and then when you get to the sales process, I mean, that's where on Chimney Closer, you can get that or you can, we can talk and help you build a process of your own, uh, which is similar to it. I mean, if you don't have a documented sales process that actually goes all the way through the rebuttals and it's changing constantly. I mean, me and Alan had a long talk at Top Golf before we were golfing the other day. Uh, and uh, and just literally, literally, you know, how we can help out the industry working together. <clears throat> and he brought it up to me, which was awesome. Of you know what can we do other than other than chimney closer to really come up with something visual to do it? But I mean, you've got to be able to train a process. Like, how do they talk when they call up? What do they say? Do you tell them what to say? It sounds so stu stupid, right? Like, what what do your guys say? Hey, this is Chad with Master Services. I'll be there in fifteen minutes. Is that all they say? How about, hey, this is Chad with Master Services. I'm calling to give you five star experience. I'm going to be there in about 15 minutes for your for your chimney and fireplace inspection. Is there anything I need to know before I come? No. See you in 15. Okay, great. You know when you go to not so when you show up, you take a picture of the house with the truck in it with your logo that goes on the CRM, okay, and maybe possibly your inspection report. Proves you're there in case you show up and they're not there, you know, because I use most of your CRMs timestamp the pictures. So you got a timestamp. Also, it's good for marketing to show your truck in, in the picture. You go, you walk up, you knock on the door. You know, hey, this is Chad with Master Services. Nice to finally meet you. I'm here to give you your five-star experience. May I come in? Yes. As you're walking in, you know, you're going to say, oh, nice dog, you know, pretty house. You know, oh, my God, you have white carpet. Holy crap, I'm scared. You know, whatever you're going to say, you know, you're talking, you know, it used to be, and I've changed this in Chibi Closer, it used to be you stop and you, at the short of the fireplace and talk to them. That Those days are over. Now it's like, okay, you know, I'm here to do the fireplace. Can we go sit down? I want to get to know your fireplace a little bit. How about over there? Can we sit at the island or can we sit at your table? Let's have a little conversation about your fireplace, and I want to know a little bit more about it before I get in there and start doing my camera inspection. Okay, sit down. They offer you coffee or water, take it. I don't care if you drink it or not. You know, if they offer coffee, ask for water. Give, get them saying yes. Yes. It's all part of sales, guys. It's mentality. Sales, yes, yes. All right. Nice, sit down. All right, I know why I'm here, right? I know why I'm here. Uh, but would you tell me in your own words why I'm here? And when they tell you what they're you're, you're there for, now you need the qualifying statement that you're the right professional. So they say, I'm here because the chimney smoked last year. Oh, great. We fix smoky chimneys all the time. As a matter of fact, I just got, got off of a repair that we did last week for someone with a smoky chimney. Now I just gave them that. The point is, I'm not going to go through I'm not going to keep going through here. That is what you need to be training everybody with. And are they doing it? And I don't care if you're on cereal or real or you're not, but you have to be training these people to make sure they're doing it. And you have to be a broken record with this stuff. Because that's what we do. I mean, we, 
even though what I love about our industry is not every appointment's the same, right? We're all we're all different. However, it gets monotonous for these guys. But we need to get it so, you know, I'll be patty, two pickle, blah, 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 that it creates the system of better sales and better sales, and you keep tweaking it and going from there. And if you get the line items in there, they're bundled as much as possible, makes them as fast as possible to get an estimate done while you're there. Boom. Now you can talk about sales and rapport. And, you know, because as we all know, and it's so overdone and over talked about, so over talked about is uh, is rapport. But it's it is it is the sales. People are not buying your shitty chimney repair. They are buying you. They are buying your guy there. That's what they're buying. And by the way, it's a fifteen thousand dollar chimney job. That's the facts. So part of your hiring and everything else come full circle is finding guys that will talk on point, rapport, do the job correctly, and go from there. But sales, you got to make it to where it feels micromanaging at first, but it becomes culture. And it has that master services. So, I mean, that sales management, uh, all a circle of, of having it correctly is sped up as fast as you could with the inspection, with the with the estimate, how to talk about bottles, how to talk about rapport, how to talk about the company. That's been added lately. That's another thing that's added. We talked, I think we talked about it a couple months ago, but to say it again, are your guys, nobody cares about your company when you show up because they haven't hired you yet, right? Maybe for a chimney inspection, but that's it. But nobody cares about how great you are when you first show up. When do they care? After you've given them the price. They really care then. So that's when you talk about your company story. Do you have a defined company story that you're teaching everybody to tell, tell the clients? Now we're talking sales process here, guys. That's sales management. What do you tell your guys to tell everybody about you? And is everybody doing it? That's management. And guys, you're not going to build Rome in a day. That's why you got to build the process and you got to hammer it, hammer it, hammer it, hammer it, hammer it more, sledgehammer it. It's it's just it's just what it has to be. It has to be so hammered into them it's it's boring and easy. That's what it is. That's what it takes. But you know, it comes back to what we said earlier. Sales fixes everything, right? So you have a crappy company, but sales are flying because everyone's doing good. Well, you'll then you now have time and you have money to fix everything else. There's 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 where the aha moment comes. Okay, <laughs> right? And so that's me talking a lot. Like, let me hear some some feedback on that. Anybody? Well, we're. That's probably my biggest thing right now. And the takeaway also from the convention was Tim Reed's class on sales management. Um, so I'm trying to come up with our process and mixing it. We, we've got, uh, we're hiring Alan Rush already the la last year and this year. But I want to take some of his process and integrate it because I liked a lot of stuff that Tim Reed had, um, how he interacts with the customer. Um and working with our two sales guys about, okay, what are you doing now? You know, what do you think the process is? And then developing our own so that I can standardize it to make sure we're all following the process. But I'm right in the middle of that and just, just starting it. We didn't have a process. I mean, we had an unwritten process that we talked about, but nothing standardized. So that's my biggest thing right now is fixing that process. And then and, and, and that is what's going to keep being developed. So also, guys, once you have a defined process and everybody's doing it, you know how easy it is to train someone else? Why do you think I can take a whole sales team after Cody left last year and train everybody and never skip a beat after I got everybody in there? Because I have a process. And I've defined it even better and better, you know, over the last year. And, and it just keeps getting better. It keep, we keep adding stuff. I mean, I mean... Alan comes to Texas, he can't sell shit to my to Dallas for we laugh about it. Yeah, he can't. But I mean the, the trap with Alan is is and this is what me and Alan were talking about, 
If you hire Alan, Alan goes out there and as much information he has when he's teaching, he's the Wild West when he's in the house. So what you have to do in, when you're with him is you got to reel him in a little bit when you, he's with his guys and tell him, do the process. Because he gets out there, he just starts just Wild Westing everything and he he doesn't stick to his own process and, and, he, and, he, and he starts selling and stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is is this is what we found out I was like Alan start teaching us you know and he does not have a very good deliverable so if you're mm -hmm. out there the more you can record Alan the better and, be, and and get it that's what we did you know we, we sat there and we took everything you know and he does not have very good deliverables which we're trying to change and so but if you hire Alan make sure that you that you really really get his objections that you write him in your own way after he sends you his crappy PDF that he has, uh, get his process defined exactly, you know, how it's going to fit for your company. Cause having Allen for a week or a le little less than a week, what happens after that? You need to make sure that it keeps getting trained into the guys and going from there. And, and that that's where Alan is great at, but you have to make sure that you, that you, you, you define it and go from there. By the way, if everybody's on Chimney World, excuse me, not Chimney World, Chimney Closer, I'm charging you guys all next week. Everyone's getting charged next week. It's $50 a person. So if you're on if you're on Chimney Closer, uh, the replay app, uh, I'm going to start charging next week. And so uh, the the honeymoon's over. And so uh, uh, that uh, that app is ready to go uh, for all you guys. And I appreciate your help uh, getting it out there and, and to go from there. So, uh, but uh all right, uh, on the sales management, is there any more questions in sales? All right. Uh, sales app for remodeling process. Mike, uh, look up Tim Reed. He has an app. What's it called, Andy? His app? It's a uh, Wi Fi. Wi Fi. Um, right. Yeah, so he has a lot of different levels. We're right now just using the the on their website quoting app that we can use in house as well, but he has a dashboard and quite a few other things. I don't know if he's changed his pricing. It used to be like stupid expensive for Wi Fi. Yeah, I yeah, talked to like just two two categories, and now it's more of a a lot more of a breakdown. But somebody else might have got into that a little more than I did. Well, I talked to Matt, one of his guys, and Tim was there in the booth at at the show. And say he went through his whole spiel, which is, is very good, but they're basically a web hosting company now. And they sell you a, a four to $5,000 design and then a $3.99 per month maintenance. So that's, oh. it's a very different model now. And, and it's all really, it's, it's set up for inserts and you, you plug in the measurements of the, the firebox size and it tells you which insert models will fit in there. And that's great if you sell, if you're a fireplace store and you sell a whole bunch of different models. But for us who just sells Regency and want to do more remodeling, that just didn't seem like a good fit. Well, you just need to go through your Regency models uh, of the items that you want to sell and build out an item list uh, that's a one-click item for each model. That's your because best we, way. And we I'll are help doing you that. that. So, yeah, and that's, that's great, but that's what we're doing. So I guess we're on the right track. Okay, and then I'm just going down the list here now. Sales manager, we're good there. Uh, uh, Logan, <laughs> not being lazy, blaming us being slower because of weather, <laughs> the weather season. Uh, explain that, Logan. Yeah, I, um, you know, I, uh, I think it revolves around marketing. Um, so it's like. All right, so we're about to get slow. Okay, just hunker down, white knuckle it. We just got to get to July. Um, instead of opening up the mind, especially within marketing, getting creative, you know, it's like we just busted our ass coming through winter. So it's like I'd like to settle down just for a second and like breathe. Uh, but if I do that, uh, I've never had, you know, 13 employees going into an April before. Um, and then it's like, dude, chill the fudge out. You, it's like literally three months. Like you got to get, th you get through the next three months, you're golden. You know, um, I think we lost a grand in January. That's just because of the way that uh, 
our invoicing fell. We made, we, you know, through the nut report, we made money. Um, you know, we made money in February. We're going to make money this month. So it's like, we're making money. So it's just like, I just, um, I just got a really poor mindset on, uh, marketing. And I think what I need to do is just give Mickey the budget and say, go do it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know about it. Take what Chad's saying, go do it. Um, so I don't know. That's just, it's just, it's just my own mental block on marketing. Um, it is definitely a scenario where, you, I mean, if you're going to give it to Mickey, you got to make sure that he knows what he's doing with it and, and, and go do it. But yeah, I mean, the, the weird thing about marketing is, is you're really buying marketing for when you, when you need it and you're slower. Cause if you did your marketing all good organically wise, you turn off all your paid marketing when you're busy. Like we turn right. off AdWords when we're busy, you know, and, uh, and I don't spend a dime on marketing come October, October through January. We don't, we, we don't spend any paid none, which right. I may change this year. I might change where we start, start actually doing more paid uh, this year uh, to try to push us uh, through the $5 million mark and, and see how that works. Uh, uh, but, uh, but the main thing is, is you got to be uncomfortable with marketing when you're not killing it. That's where, that's where you got to get, I mean, I, don't, I can't tell you your number, you know, but it, you should be closer to eight to 10%, which I guarantee is going to make you uncomfortable. And that's where yeah, you need to go. Absolutely. With absolutely. <laughs> dude, it's, so. it's so much money, dude. I mean, it's like, I can't even fathom. It's like, I don't know. So obviously like we, we really got to buckle down, get some things in place and, and really go after it. Um, and hopefully <laughs> I get jacked up and it works and my mindset changes. So yeah. Logan. So you guys hear? Hey, um, yeah, real quick. So off season stuff. Yes. We're, we're increasing our marketing. We're getting on with some TV ads and streaming ads and everything else. But what's keeping a, a lot of things that are keeping us steady right now is our relationships with local contractors, starting new relationships with local contractors relationships at the ABC supply, the building supply stores, uh, a real estate agent. So we've got stuff steady coming in and big jobs um, consistently right now. And a huge portion of it is literally just from relationships. Definitely related relationship time. So uh, moving on, uh, Chris, setting clean expectations for sales team, managing sales consistency, Sales are good, but we haven't uh, haven't officially laid out a detailed list of what process to follow. So a process we just talked about, you, 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 we can kind of get that. But expectations comes back to we just did your nut report two weeks ago, and yeah. we're going to work on that to come up with the expectations. Right? Yeah, I've, I've got a, a lot real quick, too. I was the same way with Tim Reed and a little bit of Alan Rush. It's a mixture of both uh, as far as knowing the numbers and the nut report, uh, how important that was and the peace of mind I received from that to where I could shift. And uh, now we're bringing on two more guys because the numbers don't lie. I can relate to everything everyone is saying about um, all the way down to it's only three months. Uh, we're spending this year $150,000 in marketing. We now are about eight, give or take 8%. We'll probably hit two to 2.5 this year. Uh, we are doing the TV commercials. We've been tracking that as well. Um, the amount we spent was 6,000 on broadcasting from four inspections to we close. We're already at 18K. So in two weeks, starting the videos, we've gotten 10 clients just, just from the videos alone. Um, but yeah, the, ma the management stuff, it's a, it's a clear cut case um, of uh, systems. And I already wrote up exactly what expectations are of the sales team and just, just growing from that and always hiring. So I'm texting my CFO, what our TV ad sales are, if they've changed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, but you, getting uncomfortable with marketing when, when you're slower is is hard to do. And I've been there for years and I get it. Most of the time it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But uh, uh, the bigger you get, it seems that as you grow and learn your 
market and where to put it at, it, it makes a difference. Okay, moving on. Uh, Nick, juggling the details of the whole company every day. Uh, I mean, really, not a whole lot of advice there. That's why, we, that's why you hired me. <laughs> We're still do, doing that. Uh, Daniel wanted to get into the gas side of the service business. Highly, highly regulated, regulated, would hire, uh, would be hiring any tech and blah, 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 operate under his license. Is Daniel here? Yeah, he's there. Um, yeah, uh, gas side, I mean, definitely something you could, I mean, uh, Andy, you're big into the gas, right? Yeah, we do, uh, quite a bit of gas, um, between new construction, put in fireplaces, gas inserts, um, Technically, by the, the rule of the law, um, to open the gas line, you need a fuel piping license here. So we, you know, we fudge that a little bit, but if the gas line, the true gas line, not just the connector line for a gas insert or gas logs, we sub that out and include that. We got a couple of gas guys we work with. Uh, but I can tell you right now, that's the only place that you make money at gas is servicing Right now, we're not making money, but we're we've been talking to Chad and Mike Fazy and a few others about changing to where if it's more than ten or ten to twelve years old, they're getting a and they have a problem. They get a price for replacing the control the control module, the valve, the you know pilot assembly, everything, or they can replace the whole system. And that's we're we're working on adapting that because otherwise you're just a troubleshooting company not making any money and it's just not worth it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, <clears throat> we're looking yeah, at, um, <clears throat> we're looking at trying to get into some of the installations and just being able to give our customers an option when they don't want to spend, you know, $20,000 on a prior fire. We're, we're actually referring out just a ton of business for like direct vent units. So we kind of want to get into that that side. South Carolina, you got to have a that mechanical license for natural gas, and the propane license is a standalone license. And I'm I can actually take the test to become propane certified, but I don't have the experience because there's no actually no prerequisite for the propane license. But for the mechanical for the natural gas, I've got to have two years experience, and I don't have that. Yeah. Is that for working on the gas line or just installing gas inserts and you know what I mean? Just installing the product. So I can, I can install the product and I've actually got somebody now lined up. Um, I guess I, that has their mechanical license for the natural gas. They don't have the propane. I guess I'll just take the test for the, the propane license. Um, but he will actually come and actually do the connection himself, do the leak check and the pressure test. I can install the product. I just can't break a line. And, and actually I, we're not in South Carolina. We're not even supposed to service a gas log system. I can't even disassemble the logs to clean a burner without being, without having the, the license by the, the word of the law. And there was actually a, uh, chimney company, a, a friend of mine that was issued a cease and desist order by the state um, for doing that. So they're cracking I, I, down. I think, Daniel, you got to kind of look at what the opportunity is. Is it worth hiring someone to, to get into that? Because with your model already, you're already killing it. I mean, I, I don't know if if going into that, I mean, I, I personally would go find a good sub to help you, help you do that. Yes. Yeah, uh, side of the maintenance side of that, if you can, and then do the sales yourself with him, hiring him to help you. And but, and that's that's kind of kind of where I'm headed. I I think just giving him a percentage, maybe a flat fee for hooking up a gas line if we install a direct vent unit. Yeah. Um, having him come up to to you know hook up the gas line and do the pressure test and leak check because that's where the liability is anyway. Um, and and sub that liability out to him. Right, um, right, and then and then if we do any of the service work, maybe just uh, um, you know, go back to service that on a, a annual contract, then maybe he gets a small percentage of the service because we're actually operating under his license for that. Okay, so we're at we're, we have two more left here. We're going to move on, Daniel, um, um, and I'm going to skip down the keys before I go to our last one uh, with Mike that swept away. 
Uh, Katie, are you there? Yes. All right. So you haven't been able to get past the calves. So I'm going to ask one question. Who here, and I know we talked about it earlier with, with, I believe it was Logan, and, and, and so who here has made a monster difference by selling full mount caps since they met me? Has made a monster difference in their business? One, two. Um, uh, hell yeah. Daniel. That's not what I was talking about, though. Do what? I was talking about how the app, it won't let me get past that one. Oh, okay. Thank you, notes. I will call them and get that done to me closer. Yeah, are we going to talk about my other situation offline then? Yep. I would like to no, do no, that. No, let's talk about, no, I missed you up here. Let's, let's talk about it now. What is it? Um, Let me close my door. Uh, I need I need a 30-day review. I'm sorry, I missed this. So we'll talk about Katie here. I need to do a 30-day review with my new office manager who is more qualified than the GM and office manager who he just fired. She wants to be GM, she wants to be GM and is worth the investment. Should I give her a raise? Yeah, so, so guys, you know, go ahead, Katie. Give, give us the backstory no, here. Well, the backstory, she just hired her as to be the call center manager, correct? So and, and she's starting to see that her ability in a very short amount of time is probably be able to manage the company. And so uh, should she give her a rate? I mean, have you decided to move her to the GM spot? Or is that part Not of the question? at this point in time. No, I don't want to move her at this point in time. I want to, you know, she's still got to get things together in the office and get us to where we need to be as an office before she can hand that off to somebody else. You know, so we've still got time there. But, you know, we were talking yesterday, um, catching up since we were, you know, on our land last week. And she was saying, well, what was it that Chris and Bruce were doing? Like, you know, she's like fishing for, well, am I doing some of those things? Should I be like, you know what I mean? Without saying that directly. So, and I mean, she is, she, she does do a good job. And I think that she does show promise. So I feel like I should maybe give her just a, a something in good faith of you're doing a great job. And I know that you're going to be here. I don't know. I mean, what are your thoughts? I just, I'd like to give back. everybody everything. So <laughs> I'd give her a pat on the back and hire her for a, once you start giving raises immediately, just cause they, they're, you know, they're, they, they've relieved you a little bit and they're starting to do their job. Well, that's, that's not a reason to give someone a raise. I mean, you're mm -hmm. trying to, you're trying to recognize her as what you're doing. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you don't need to do it with pay. She's already accepted your pay. And, and maybe she's doing other jobs that's part of, not part of her job description when she first started. Maybe she's not, but she needs. A, I mean, if you if you start dolling out stuff because people do something good a little bit, they're starting to get better every time. They're going to expect raises all the time, and you're right. you're creating an environment that's just going to tank everything because everybody's expecting a raise. Because hey, didn't you just do a hundred thousand dollar job? Now I want a raise. I just got that for you. So not you just did your job. I mean, and I paid you mm -hmm. for that. I mean, no, I'm not giving you a raise for that. Um, you don't know her enough. I, I can tell you, here, here's, here's, and you kind of found this out with the other guys, Katie, and you all have seen this, uh, and, and you probably even seen this yourself. Shooting stars. You got to start thinking about shooting star employees. They come out of the gate and they're awesome. What are they four months later? Awesome. So, I mean, you got to get through the honeymoon stage with anybody before you even think about it. And so what I would suggest you do, Katie, is possibly is when you do hire somebody and you can tell her this now or even today, we're going to have a review on your on your stuff and discuss everything. And don't even talk about pay in the review when you tell them about the review. If you feel after four to six months when you have the review that you want to give them a raise at that time and, you, and the kind of honeymoon is starting to, to, to get more consistent on the daily basis, then give her something. But right now, she's like, any more there a month. No. I, I mean, my personal opinion is no raise. No raise for you. <laughs> and so I think that yet. I mean what I need to do in lieu of is outline a clear path to getting her towards the next position so that she has that to look forward to because she's motivated and wants to know what to do and she'll do it, you know. So I think maybe that's where I need to really focus on creating what that clear path is going to be like for her. How long has she been with you? Go ahead, Chris. How long has she been with you? She's been with me for 30 days. Okay. So yeah, what, yeah what she's I she's worth six figures easy, and she accepted the position at fifty five thousand salary. So, wow. I mean, I I feel like she's definitely deserving of more. 
But here's the thing, Katie, when you look at the medium income, especially in your area, I mean, we have a tendency of overpay people. I mean, our whole industry does really. And, and, and we, we feel, I mean, and honestly, if, if I don't know where she came from, but I would, I would, I would bet she's never had a $75,000 job in her life. Cause she's, she's never had that opportunity anywhere else. And now all of a sudden you're throwing out, she's a seven figure person. Well, no, she's, she's used to making over six figures. Okay. Um, most of the people that we deal with have not, and their value right. is there, but you know, so, I mean, we'll definitely take this into the, into the, into the, in the, uh, our private session, but, uh, for sure is she accepted your $55,000 job. Don't feel guilty that she is doing better than what she has. I mean, she's, she's doing it. And so, yeah, I mean, you got her for the price. She's doing it now at this point, let her earn it at least three more months to see if she's really, really mm -hmm. consistent. We're looking for consistency here now, right? I mean, right. And that good people can be anywhere, but they're not consistent. I mean, mm -hmm. you need consistency. And so in 30 days is not showing consistency. Sure. Fair enough. Um, but, you know, even in, in addition to that, when it does get to that point where she does move positions, I want it to be a a company profitability like share. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I need to figure out that out. That way it's, you know, investment, right? <laughs> From oneself to make sure that we are profitable. Well, I'll show you what we do and I'll talk about this in our session and maybe our next mate thing and how you pay a COO or someone big. So I know Mickey's going through it right now. Kent enlightened me how to do it. And it's not so much, a, it is a kind of a company shares hybrid type of model. And so I'll go over that uh, uh, next, next, next time, or at least next time we'll talk about it, Katie. And so, cool. okay. Um, all right. Well, here we go. Mike, uh, brand new guy. Mike, his question here is, is, Having stepped into an already operating business and not starting from nothing, I feel conflicted. I'm a very hands-on technical person. I am certified to have a good understanding of what it is that we do on a sales inspection level. But I have employees that can do the work. I struggle with deciding whether to stay in the field or step back and spend more of my time working on the process or working on the business. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let... I think it's pretty self-explanatory, Mike, so I don't need an explanation from you. Everybody else, go. What do you think you should do? Anybody, chime in. For me, Chris. what I did, yeah, for, for me, what I did was I was in the same same issue is I'm I'm very particular with how things are done and so on and so forth. But I I had to train my guys up first. I had to um, you know learn patience, um, create SOPs and systems to where then eventually when I got out of the field and got the right people in the right places, uh, it changed everything to where I haven't been out in the field uh, for what, two, two months, I'd say. Um, but uh, we also have in-house training of rip and replaces. i I have pretty much everything you can do via the chimney industry here in our shop. It took time to do it, but um, it was worth every penny to where my guys knew nothing about tools to where now they can do twenty to $25,000 jobs by themselves. And a field foreman pops in to make sure everything is going good. Um, but yeah, the training, it, it sucks at first, but... Once you get it all ironed out, it's it's worth it in my opinion. Anybody else for a one minute close uh, up here, Logan? Yeah, I think uh, you know it's fine to be in the field. Like, if I understand this correctly, you just purchased this business or you purchased it in the past year or so. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine to get in the field and figure out what's going on. I think it's great to be getting a pulse of what those guys are doing. But you're in the field to see whatever everybody else is doing. You're not in the field to do the work. Hmm. We've all been in the field. We've all done the work. It's just part of owning a business. Your job is to get out of the field as soon as possible so that you are making money off 10 other guys instead of you're the only one making money in the field. That That's the whole goal 
of getting out is so some you can make money off of someone else and then continue to do that with however many employees you have. So right now, essentially, Mike, and he didn't he didn't he doesn't he didn't buy the business. He's been brought in, so he's actually the general manager. But still, it's he's in the same scenario because uh, they they are retired and not in the operations or day to day at all, right, Mike? Correct. So I mean. I mean, you're you're going to be right now a hybrid where you're going to have to be on the field. You're going to have, like I explained yesterday, you're going to have to be training people your way, and then and then and then and then coming back and managing, like we said. But the goal is 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 we want speed, but we want quality, right? We want to make sure that whoever we hire can do the work. You've got them trained correctly, not off of another guy training them, training them there all their ticks and and miscomings and everything else train exactly how you want it put them in the field train them get them like that and then get everything going and then get it get get out of the field and manage them that's what that's the whole goal is is being able to manage from the desk not manage from a truck and so you're going to be a hybrid of both at, at this point right now but that's our goal i mean our goal is to hopefully what are we at march Hopefully, come the the fall season, uh, you won't have to be on the field at all. That's that's my goal. It, it may not happen this year, but it will be reduced from what you probably would have done without hiring me. So, fair enough. Okay, guys, I, did did I miss anybody's questions? No. I'm gonna make sure I did. Okay, guys, great session. So I did record it. I am gonna. Uh, at some point in time, put it on outside the business box. If you're not on outside the business box Facebook group, please ask to join it. I, I don't do much with it, but I do. I am going to try to start doing more with it, uh, and uh, and put the try to put these videos on there for you to rewatch. Something you, you need to go get uh, and do it. But uh, try to just build our tribe a little bit more uh, uh, on the togetherness, other than the once a month scenario. So. Um, just a little housekeeping. Uh, we're on next week. Uh, I gotta make sure to look at where are we at. Um, at this point, April will probably stay the same. May and June, we are probably changing our schedules because the last week of May is Memorial Day, uh, last Monday, and the week after that, I'm gone. I'm actually. So I'm actually gone the 31st through May through the 9th or 10th. Of, I'm taking a, a vacation. So that'll be a vacation week for me. So we may just skip the mastermind group, do our one-on-ones that week of the 27th of May um, and uh, and do that. By the way, I I'm going to move it right now just so everybody knows. I, does everybody like the Tuesday time versus the Monday afternoon time? Okay, so I'm just going to move it right now. This and following events send. So you just got it where it got should have gotten moved, and it did for every month. But I'll be changing it if we're gonna, and it's going to be a little bit goofy this summer with the vacations with everybody, and so uh, uh, we. But we'll go from there. But we probably won't be doing that one on the 28th of May because the next week. I uh, just we'll just skip we'll just skip that I'm gonna do it right now. We're gonna skip this one. I'm gonna delete this one event. So send. So we won't be doing the 28th. We'll just do our one-on-ones. And then on the 31st, I'm leaving for 10 days uh to Destin, Destin, and I'll be off that week. So I'll be deleting everybody off. So if you see some deletes, by the way, just for housekeeping, if you get a notification that I deleted a uh, one of your appointments, look at the date. More than likely, I'm deleting something in the future. I did not delete your today or your this week's thing. I will always call you if I'm deleting something this week or today. I'm doing it in the future. So if you actually look at the email you get, the date is probably in a month from now or two months from now. So uh, just to know that. So with that, guys, great meeting. And uh, I will see you on your one-on-ones. Uh, I have a phone to text if you have questions. Most of you use it very well. I'm available all the time and uh, and go from there. So, guys, I will see you in your one-on-ones. And, Andy, give me 10, 15, or 12 minutes, and I'll see you in our session here in a minute. Thanks, all right, Chad. goodbye, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Dad.